Organizational boundaries. Setting inventory boundaries. In order to create a greenhouse gas inventory, companies must quantify their greenhouse gas emissions. But first, they need to determine which emissions they will account for. This is an important step of the planning process known as setting boundaries. There are three steps to setting boundaries for a GHG inventory. First, the company must decide for which time period it is gathering information. Is the company creating a GHG inventory for a calendar year, a fiscal year, or perhaps another time period? This is known as a temporal boundary. Next, the company must decide which of its operations will be part of the inventory, such as subsidiaries, joint ventures, partnerships, franchises, or other operations. This part is called setting the organizational boundary. Finally, the company must consider all the activities within its organizational boundaries that cause greenhouse gas emissions. These may include electricity use, business travel, product and material distribution, and the use of furnaces, boilers, generators, and incinerators. Once these activities have been identified, they must be categorized as either direct or indirect emissions, and the company must decide which of its indirect emissions it will account for. This process is known as setting operational boundaries. Organizational boundaries. Business operations vary in their legal and organizational structures. They may include subsidiaries, joint ventures, partnerships, franchises, as examples. Organizational boundaries determine which of the company's business operations will be included in its inventory. The physical location of these operations, that is, their geographic location and whether they are located in buildings that the company owns or space that it leases, is not relevant to establishing organizational boundaries. The only consideration when setting organizational boundaries is the company's organizational structure. If a company wholly owns and controls all of its operations, then the company is 100% responsible for the emissions that result from these operations. However, if a company has partial ownership or control of operations, then the question becomes more complicated, because the company must determine to what extent it is responsible for these emissions. In order to address this issue, the Greenhouse Gas Protocol and the ISO standards have developed two approaches that companies can use to set their organizational boundaries. The equity share approach and the control approach. Determining organizational boundaries can be intimidating at first, but most of the information needed can be obtained from the company's financial accountant. There is a lot of overlap between financial accounting and greenhouse gas accounting particularly when it comes to setting organizational boundaries. The equity share approach. Under the equity share approach, a company is responsible for emissions from joint operations based on its share of ownership in the operations. A company's share of ownership is also known as its equity share. Equity share exists when more than one entity has a financial interest in a particular operation. To illustrate the equity share approach, let's assume that company A and company B have a joint operation. We'll call it XYZ Inc. Company A has a 75% equity share in XYZ and company B owns the remaining 25. Under the equity share approach, both companies would include XYZ in their organizational boundary. However, company A would only account for 75% of its emissions, and company B would account for the remaining 25. Now, 
let's assume that company XYZ has a subsidiary called Gamma Inc., in which it owns a 50% equity share. In this case, company A would account for 37.5% of Gamma's emissions and company B would account for 12.5%. These numbers come from multiplying the company's percentage ownership in XYZ by XYZ's percentage ownership in Gamma. The other 50% of Gamma's emissions would be accounted for by the party that owns the remaining 50% of the company. It should be noted that under the equity share approach, a company's equity share in an operation is meant to reflect its economic interest in the operation. This means that a company's percentage ownership in an operation is intended to reflect the percentage of profits and losses that it receives. However, this is not always the case. Sometimes, the allocations of profits and losses are disproportionate. For example, two companies might have a 50-50 joint operation, that is, each company owns 50% of the operation, but one company might receive two-thirds of the profits and losses, while the other receives only one-third, despite the fact that it's a 50-50 joint operation. In these situations, under the equity share approach, a company's economic interest in the operation overrides the percentage ownership. That means the extent to which the company is responsible for the greenhouse gas emissions arising from the operation should be based on the company's economic interest in that operation, not necessarily its percentage ownership, since these two numbers may differ. Guidance on a company's percentage ownership in its joint operations and whether or not its percentage ownership is equal to its share of the profits and losses should be obtained from the company's financial accountants. The control approach. Under the control approach, a company is responsible for 100% of the GHG emissions from the operations over which it has control. Conversely, a company is not responsible for any of the greenhouse gas emissions from operations over which it does not have control, even if the company has an equity share in those operations. Unlike the equity share approach, where a company can report a percentage of the emissions resulting from its joint operations, the control approach is an all-or-nothing game. Either they have control or they don't. If they have control, they account for all of its emissions. If they don't have control, they do not account for any of the emissions. The GHG protocol and the ISO standards have defined two different types of control which can be used to set operational boundaries. Financial control and operational control. Thus, the control approach for setting organizational boundaries is further subdivided into financial control approach and the operational control approach. Financial control. A company has financial control over an operation when it has the ability to direct its financial policies to gain economic benefits from its activities. In other words, a company is considered to financially control an operation if it retains the majority of risks and rewards arising from the ownership of the operation's assets. Thus, in order to have financial control, a company must have ownership in the operation. In fact, most of the time, when a company has financial control, it is the majority owner of the operation. But once again, the economic substance of the relationship takes precedence over the operation's legal ownership structure. As a result, a company can have financial control over an operation in which it is not the majority owner. In some situations, parties have joint financial control over an operation. In these situations, the financial control approach should not be used. Instead, the company should use the equity share approach. Operational control. A company has operational control over an operation if it or one of its subsidiaries has the full authority to introduce and implement its day-to-day -day operating policies at the operation.
but operational control does not mean that a company has the authority to make all of the decisions concerning an operation. For example, large capital investments will likely require approval from the parties that have financial control. Operational control only refers to the company's ability to direct the day-to-day -day policies of the operation. In most cases, a company that has financial control of an operation will also have operational control. But this is not always the case. Some industries, such as the oil and gas industry, have complex ownership arrangements in which one company has financial control and the other company has operational control. This was the case with the Deepwater Horizon offshore drilling rig. The rig was owned by a company called TransOcean and leased to BP. But the crew members were TransOcean employees and the day-to-day -day operations of the rig were controlled by TransOcean. BP simply purchased the mineral rights to the oil, leased the rig from TransOcean, and paid TransOcean to operate the rig. Maintaining consistency. Setting organizational boundaries will only result in consistent data if all levels of the organization use the same approach. In order to ensure consistency, the parent company must decide on an approach, either the equity share approach, the financial control approach, or the operational control approach. Once an approach has been selected and a corporate policy has been created, it must be applied to all levels of the organization. Which approach to use? Companies should consider which approach is best suited for their businesses based on their needs, goals, and requirements. The GHG protocol and ISO standards make no recommendations as to which approach should be used. However, whichever method is selected, it should be applied consistently throughout the inventory. There are many factors that can influence a company's decision on which approach to use. These include the reflection of commercial reality, liability and risk management, alignment with financial accounting practices, performance tracking, and cost and administration and data access. When it comes to commercial reality, an argument can be made that if a company derives an economic profit from an operation, then it should take responsibility for the GHG emissions resulting from that operation. This is best achieved by using the equity share approach, since it assigns ownership of greenhouse gas emissions proportionally to a company's economic interests in an operation. In terms of liability and risk management, the owners of an operation have the ultimate financial liability. So, when it comes to assessing risk, accounting for GHG emissions on the basis of equity share and financial control is more accurate. Specifically, the equity share approach will probably result in the most accurate assessment of risks. In the future, Companies may incur liabilities for greenhouse gas emissions produced by joint operations in which they have equity, but over which they do not have any control. Future financial accounting standards may treat greenhouse gas emissions as liabilities and emissions allowances and credits as assets. To assess the assets and liabilities of a company's joint operations, the same rules that are applied in financial accounting should be applied in GHG accounting. The equity share and financial control approaches are the most similar to rules used in financial accounting. When it comes to tracking performance, the control approaches are obviously more appropriate because companies can only influence activities over which they have control. And finally, when it comes to administrative costs, the control approaches tend to be favorable because it is generally difficult and time-consuming for companies to collect data from joint operations over which they do not have any control.